Gracias. Muy, muy. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I will be speaking today about a solution called PDN SOC that we are implementing in the National Education Research Network in Mexico. This is a solution that adds a security layer to what the organizations already have. And this allows us, as I mentioned, to have an additional layer. So what is PDNS SOC? This is an open source project that was developed by the CERN. And this allows us to have different implementation models. Mostly, this is a project that shares compromised indicators, in other words, through an instance we can have these compromise indicators, which basically is something that any organization can use, whatever the size. And this has minimum requirements in terms of resources. It also has a very rapid configuration. It is quite true that this configuration is fast, but this is what took us most time. We really had to understand how this works and to understand the MISP platform because we are not expert in that. So what has then led us to implement this solution? Well, in principle, this is because it was developed by the CERN. They tell us that they are operating a server with this solution and that they have deployed this in more than 50 hospitals in Switzerland. They have a redundancy server in Gulf Cert. And since the year 2019, when they, when they implemented this, there have been a reduction of the ransomware cases to zero. Of course, this is not the only solution, and not only for this reason, but it has also contributed significantly to reduce the ransomware cases in those organizations where they have implemented this. One of the features is that have multiple instances. A CERT has multiple MISP instances. 350 organizations are sharing their MSISP with a CERN MISP. Therefore, they have a large amount of indicators of compromise, a lot of intelligence in this sense. So the CERN shares these compromise indicators. They only share the top indicators. So because of the nature of the CERN's activities, they have a response team that has is highly trained, which can help us out in the event of an incident. As we mentioned already, this is an open source project. It is downloadable from a public repository. Deployment can be done very rapidly. This includes threat intelligence through MISP with compromise indicators. It supports multiple data sources. In other words, it can integrate several DNS logs. The changes required to the infrastructure of the organizations or the users are really minimal. They're very small. And of course, this complies with the overall regulation of the data protection regulation of the European Union. As you are aware, in the recent updates, it also includes the IP address as a sensitive fact in order to identify a user. So this application respects this confidentiality. Now, how does this work? The users of an organization, in this case, in our case, we are a university, so we send a request to access a given domain, a DNS server. 
this request or these transactions are stored in a log file at the server and these are shared in a collector which is one of the pieces of the pdns sock this is then shared with this collector this collector then sends this information to the pdns sock this can be submitted completely or anonymized and these analyzed data are sent with the indicators of compromise of MISP. Now, if any indicator of compromise is found, an alert is sent to the security team. The application can go even beyond that, but in this case, an alert is then generated. As we already said, there are many implementation models. For example, this is a collaborative model where the university or the organization can have deployed its DNS server. And some other external instance, for example, the National Education and Research Network in Mexico, we now have deployed this in our PDNS SOC option and the MSIP instance. So what they do is to submit through the collector the information on their DNS server. <coughs> this collaborative model, as was mentioned, is one whereby the university provides the DNS service to its community. The logs are stored. They can be forwarded to an external uh, uh, instance. And our DNS SOC instance has a MISP instance that is connected where the information is analyzed against these indicators of compromise. And if we detect something, we then send an alert back to our security team and to the security team of the institution. With this model, we can only generate alerts, but we cannot take any further action because for obvious reasons, this we are not in the infrastructure of the university now. However, with these alerts, the institution could take some corrective actions in their own DNS. They can block some of the domains or IPs and maybe also creating policies in the perimeter devices in terms of security. And then there is a second model. In this case, this is a responsive model whereby the organization does not have a DNS server or does not wish to use it and prefers to use the entire network or the national network. So in this model, they use the DNS server of the national network in Mexico and we are in charge of forwarding the logs because they are in our infrastructure. We conduct the analysis and if we detect indicators of compromise, we generate this alert in our device and also to the university. This model, well, this is what I was just explaining. In this model, data collection is done through these collectors and the entire process is carried out in the national network. If we would find an indicator, as I was saying, then alert is sent to this institution. In this case, we could take some corrective actions because we can control our own DNS server. And quite obviously, the institution could also take corrective action in the perimeter security. There's a third implementation model where the institution, the university, could have everything contained in its infrastructure. In other words, the DNS server, it can deploy its ISP instance and also the PDNS SOC solution. So in this other model, which is a federated model, everything is contained in the institution, everything is executed within the institution, and it doesn't need to send any log. 
what we receive are the security alerts. And they were to find some indicator of compromise. And that would be all. They don't need to share any other type of information. In this model, the organization has the entire solution and deploys it in its infrastructure. Here, the MSP instances, both of the institution and our own, are synchronized in such a way that we share the indicators of compromise. The entire analysis is done on the side of the university. We only receive the alerts, but in this model, the institution can take correct actions in their DNS servers or also in the perimeter security devices. Now, how did we embark on this project? We became acquainted with this project around the month of September or October. We had conversations with the CERN in order to sign a collaboration agreement in the month of November 2023 in the framework of a conference that you might be familiar with, which is called TICAL, which was organized in this city in Panama. This agreement then was signed between the National Network and the CERN. Basically, this agreement allows us to share the information of the MISP instances with the CERN and our MISP of the National Network. So we could receive all the information from the 350 organizations from which they also receive information. So that is most enriching for us. This, therefore, allows us to receive this information. In addition to that, the CERN has provided support to deploy our MISP, as well as for the deployment of the BDNS SOC for the deployment of this. So in the first deployment scenario, we had to deploy all the applications. We had to have the DNS server available, the BDNS SOC, instance and the MISP instance that was synchronized with the MSP instance of the CERN. These models that we saw then had to be established in our own organizations. An organization might opt for using the entire infrastructure, everything that had or has already been deployed in the network, or also they might opt to use part of this and then they would deploy this in their own infrastructure. Now, however, after having signed the agreement, there was a change. A collaboration agreement was established between the CERN and the Red Clara, which brings together the education and research networks in Latin America and the Caribbean. So. This organization brings together networks from Brazil, Chile, Ecuador, Colombia, and Costa Rica, Guatemala, Mexico, Cuba. So they establish this agreement directly between Red Clara and the CERN and also change the deployment scenario. So now, with this agreement, well, that facilitates the national networks. It's not, no longer the case that each network should sign an agreement with CERD, but under this framework agreement through Clara, Red Clara, all the national networks, this is just an example, there are many more connected, but uh, this agreement is established, enabling us, first of all, in Red Clara, we can deploy um, this instance that uh, is connected to the MISP uh, instance of CERN, and then each national uh, network can connect it to uh, Red Clara. So we can have a, a much, much uh, uh, richer uh, compromise network because all the networks can add compromise. Uh, indicators and share them with all of the academic community. That 
changed uh, the model a bit, uh, but basically what changed was the instances we are synchronizing on this with. So how do we start uh, the how do we start the first stage? Uh, once we had these changes, we started by defining the uh, the goals and uh, the activities that needed to be conducted to um, implement it in the network. And uh, we had to deploy the infrastructure, obviously. So we, we had to measure the results better. We had to invite the institutions and define the models of implementation they wanted to use, define it with them, and accompanying them through the deployment. All these activities, especially the uh, um, accompanying them and defining the models, this was something new for us. Uh, we hadn't done it, so uh, it uh, was uh, time consuming and it was a painstaking work. So we defined some objectives, some goals. One was to integrate a shared intelligence platform that could provide us, uh, could, could provide value to all of the organizations involved, to the universities, but also the national network. So that is one of the objectives. And then establishing that we can share information in real time. That is that our instances are synchronized because not only is it a matter of uh, putting a MISP instance in the university, but the university may have campuses. So those campuses may also have uh, MISP uh, uh, instances in some cases in very large uh, universities and there um, it's not so simple. You need to point out who you want to share information with, what information you want to share. So all that uh, took us longer. And then being able to, to join a global cybersecurity community, or in this case, first of all, in the national network, uh, but um, the first in Latin America and then at a global level with other national uh, E and R um, networks and uh, giving us quality information for prevention. And uh, to that end, we conducted the first pilot uh, test. We, we invited four universities plus what we already had deployed of the four universities, only three. Uh, actually participated. The fourth was unable to deploy it. Um, and as a first deployment model, well, we select uh, we um, we selected the responsive model where the institution had to do almost nothing. Um, with the applications of the infrastructure that they had, unless they use the infrastructure and the deployment that was already available in their network, so as not to make any modifications in the systems that they had. So they only directed um, or in some small segments in the network for these uh, uh, petitions to the DNS server. So this was a pilot to have these results. So basically, in this first pilot uh, trial that we did, we just completed it. We have the analysis of the logs of our DNS servers. Some alerts were generated. However, well, we are also getting started with this in this project, and we now understand what is the best way we can share these alerts with uh, the rest of uh, the institutions that participate. Uh, now, having completed this first stage, what we decided to do together with the uh, other participants is that they're going to deploy the entire infrastructure and they're going to share the alerts. Uh, that is a second model that we are uh, going to implement. And they want to have that 
experience for the implementation to obtain results. So now we are in the second model of deployment. What have we done now? Well, we are helping them install uh, MISP and PDNS SOC and uh, uh, in uh, their infrastructure at the universities. The, some of the universities have already synchronized their MISP with uh, the MISP of the network, of the national network. So that's where we are now. And um, so what's the next step? Well, basically, we need to make the adjustments to uh, the uh, tools that have already been deployed. Deployed. We are inviting other institutions. We already have more institutions that have uh, expressed their uh, interest to participate more. We, our aim is to uh, put um, uh, to invite uh, at least twenty. Hopefully, we would have more. The in the second stage, we are exploring the possibility of integrating tools for the automatic block. Uh, now we are only deploying the alerts that reach to our security uh, team, the, the security team of the institutions. But in a second phase, we want to integrate tools to conduct all those tasks automatically, such as RPZ. That's what we are evaluating. And then with a larger group of universities, with a larger deployment, well, we'll be able to better evaluate the results. So where do we want to reach with all this? Well, this is part uh, of uh, the things that we are um, integrating in the network. Well, w what we want is that this uh, uh, intelligent and threat uh, information ex uh, data exchange may be a reality for the education sector in Mexico. The institutions in Mexico tend not to share information. This is, that's the way it is. And in an exercise that we did to know the uh, sec uh, status of security of all the institutions, well, it was important to establish agreements to share information in a rapid and effective manner. We believe that uh, by sharing uh, sharing this uh, information may be a common practice. We want to have more and more tools. This is not the only one that we are implementing and evaluating, but we want to have more and more tools so that we may have a better data intelligence. So, and uh, having this effective, uh, um, we had some uh, um, incidents response uh, teams, but uh, without, uh, they were not integrated. But now as we are integrating, not just um, the tools, but um, also in some groups, so we, we have integrated them. So basically, this is what we, I wanted to share with you. There you have the URL of the project. There you have all of the information. And uh, I'm uh, at your disposal if you have any questions or comments. Thank you. Thank you, Fernando. We have a question. Yes. Congratulations for your presentation and for the project. I hadn't seen anything like that with this level, of, uh, uh, with this scope. So congratulations for that. I, I had a question about RPZ, but uh, at the end uh, you sort of solved it. And I have a presentation later about that. And I think that uh, technologies absolutely fit with each other. So I think that exploring and uh, uh, bringing all the intelligence with, through RPZ to systematize the block blockade, I think that's perfect. And I also want to congratulate the programs committee. You notice there is cohesion in the presentations. And I, I would uh, encourage you to go on in this, that path. Yes, thank you. And I'm sure you're going to be our advice in that part. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I had a small question. You mentioned that this here you analyze the logs. Is it possible to do it on the queries? 
directly so that you can adopt uh, uh, or you can take action before the problems ever appear? Well, no, I'm not aware what uh, we have been uh, taught at Sarah. It needs to be on the logs. This is something uh, well, we can find that out, but I'm not aware of that now. Well, a round of applause for Fernando. Thank you.